Right guys, back in the workshop. I've been working on the carbs. Um, we haven't got the air filters on. I did put them on, but then I found I was having problems and I couldn't reset the carbs with my little drill trick that I use. This little chap here, put it in there, just bring it down so it touches on each carb. Now there's no base carb on the set of 26s, at least not, on the, not to my knowledge, like there was on 1100. So you're doing each one individually. Um, and I start off with this as a gauge, as I said before, with a drill and um, set them all up so that the slider, the valve, is just touching it. You can just pull it in with a little bit of resistance and pull it out with a bit of resistance. You've got to be careful because there is a groove in the middle of the, the actual slider valve. So I've done that and I think this is as bad as best as I think I can get it without the gauges. The gauges are on their way. The new set of gauges are on their way. See what you think. Ignition on, run switch to run, go. Now I think that'll stay running. I don't know, bear in mind these carbs are 50 years old. They have been serviced as far as jets, cleaned, new jets, new gaskets, all set up. I think that's gonna stop. Let's just try and bring in a little bit. Yeah. Might help if I turn the fuel on, wouldn't it? So that's a bit silly. Okay, we got fuel now. Well, that's ticking over about 500 revs, according to the rev counter, but that could be out. Just tweaked it a little bit on the idle. That does seem to be about the sweet spot I can get without the gauges. But we'll see. I think that would stay idling now for a while before it stopped. That's idling about 750 revs. Which isn't too bad considering. A little bit slow on the down. Let's kill it. So there we go. I think the gauges one might be able to get it better than that. In fact, I'm sure I will. But these carbs, they're not so easy to do as the 1100 because you don't get that base carb. As I said, not to my knowledge. So I'm doing a tweak at a time, a tweak at a time. But all I've done at the moment, as I said, I've taken it down, each slider, I've taken it down to the, the width of that drill. Which is, incidentally, so if I can see it, I can't see it. I think it's about four mil. And I use that as me, as me gauge and go from there. Eh? It's like a baseline. So, We'll wait for the gauges now. So let it cool down a little bit. We'll fire it up again. Bring you guys back a little bit. Let's try again. There's a fan on the front there, just in case guys are wondering, because you don't want to cook it. Yeah, I think we could get them better with that thing with the gauges. I think we could. Okay, I'm going to kill it now. Right. And of course, what you've got to remember, when you tighten up the nut, which is obviously the screw is running through, the adjustment screw is running through the nut, the lock nut. When you tighten that up, just by tightening it, you could 
knock these out a little bit. Not a lot, but enough to upset the balance because this is a fine tune. The fine tune can only really be done with the gauges. When they arrive, we'll carry on with it, but I think probably that's as good as I can get it as it is at the moment without them. But they should be in next week, so we'll see how we go. Anyway, for the time being, that's me signing out. Yeah, I'll be back later with the Z1. Um, it's coming on. Once the carbs are done and the air box is in, um, the chain guard, put the chain, I might put the chain guard on in a minute actually. Once that's done, we're ready to rock and roll. Take it out for a spin, see what we got. Right, see you later folks. Morning guys. Um, I haven't been around for a while, probably about two weeks now, but things are coming on. Um, I've got some video which I've got to edit um, and I will obviously get around to that as quick as possible. Anyway, good morning. Today, I've got a box, a delivery. Let's go and get it. I did open it earlier, but I thought I'd let you guys join in the fun. Why not? This has come from a company called McGill Motorsport. Now, you will probably see in part of the video. Um, in fact, if you go back to the 11Z1100, you'll see me using some cheap, horrible, nasty blue gauges from um, a far off land um, beginning with C. And whatever I seem to do with those gauges, they just did not seem to cut it. Let me talk to you directly instead of talking to a box. Yeah, they did not seem to cut it. And I think I said in one of my earlier videos, I tried connecting all the gauges up to one tube, the two end ones going into a T-piece, two, two middle ones, two and three going into a T piece, joining one tube. So effectively they're all on one tube, but equally done. And I put it on one outlet on the carburetor only to find, as I suspected, and I suspected this a long time ago, that number one is totally out of sync with the others. And I've tried to move the little, little screw to bring it back. Crap just rubbish didn't work so today as i said the box has arrived and we'll have a look inside together right i bought this as a birthday present for me and zebedee it was my birthday on saturday or was it sunday i can't remember anyway it was a birthday so my other half tells me. Let's open the box. You know, I think I mentioned it before actually. I don't really understand these people that buy a product, excuse the lorry going by, we might have a few today. And excuse the wrapping. I don't really understand why people buy products and um, they just do a video on called unboxing. What is that about? Unboxing. You want to see what it's all about? You want to see what's going on? Anyway, we're not just unboxing this, as I said in another video. We're going to use these. Let's have a look at them. Now these are quality. I paid a bit of money for these. You can all see what they are now. Yeah. I'm hoping these will give me an accurate reading for old Zebedee over there. Let's go and see Zebedee. He's come a long way now. 
Um, you will see in some earlier videos, um, I've run it. I have run it. Um, I did film it the first start, um, and it was pretty awful. And the reason it was awful, as, it, as, I, as I explained in the video, the carbs were just way out. So I've taken the carbs off, and I've redone a test, used a slightly smaller drill this time, and I put it on the inlet side and I adjust these little chaps. One carb, two carb and the same on the other side for three and four. And so you can just move it out. And it does seem a lot better. So that's where we're at at the moment. He's coming on. The carbs have been synced, but only with the drill. They've not been synced with the gauges. And that's what we bought those gauges for. Those Chinese ones, oh, did I say Chinese? <laughs> they're going in the bin because they're a waste of time, waste of space, and I'm just going around in circles. <clears throat> you get a lot of attachments with this. Now, a lot of this I probably won't use. The tubes go, luckily, the tubes go directly onto the inlet rubbers. Kawasaki is smart enough to build a pipe on there. So I'm thinking to myself, We'll hang these up and we'll set it all up and we'll have a go at doing the fine tuning later on today if we can. I've got to go out today so I won't be around to do it now but I will be around to do it later. That's a good bit of length of tubing isn't it? Look at that. Huge. Like that. Yeah. I think this will do it. At least I hope it will. It's got to be better than what I've been using. What makes it tricky on the Z1, and I said this in another video, so I'm probably repeating myself yet again, is the fact that you don't get a base carb redder. On a modern day bike, you get a base carb. And you basically work from that carb along the rest it's all on the 1100 video please do go back and have a look but you don't get that on the z1 so we've got to do each one independently and what you have to be careful of is as you just one the revs will creep up or go down on the others so it's a little bit out of time and it really is fine tuning so we'll put that in there like that see if I can shut the lid I can like that we'll put that there and we'll leave that till later on today so when I get back I should be filming this and um, we'll see how it goes see you later Hi right, folks, back in the workshop again. Um, I've just connected the gauges up. So what I'm going to do is put you back on the pod, take you over to the bike and show you where I've put the gauges. They're the new ones, which we went through about 20 minutes ago. Um, and then we're going to see if we can fire up and see what they're like. Right, now then. I think what I might do is bring you up a bit. Bear in mind, these are the new ones. We don't know how they're going to fare. Camera's running, so I'll turn the ignition on and see what we get. <clears throat> Just turn the fuel on. Ignition on, run to run. Take the papers out the carbs. Won't be a good idea to fire them up with them in there. Right, choke is on. Here we go.
I'm going by those gauges and I hope it's recording. This one is slightly up. So they're not that far out. Bear in mind that the air filter is not in and the air boxes are not on. It really does need them to be 100%. We're looking at that there. I'm quite happy with that. So it wasn't that far out with the drill. Kill it. We better put the fan on. Course, the proof of the pudding really is when the air box is on and we open it up and take it for a spin and then check it and I think then that will tell us whether it's really close or it's out at the moment though they look pretty good I'm quite pleased with that and I'm convinced that those gauges are so much better than the other ones so where do these come from well let's have a look at the paperwork Um, these come from a company called McGill Motorsports Limited. And where are they based? Edinburgh. That's quite incredible. No, that's their bank. Fife. Yeah, based in Fife, Scotland. Kirk Caldy. If anybody wants to know where they are. McGill Motorsports. They supply these. Quite impressed. Early days, but for what I've seen so far, they're pretty good. Better than those um, ones that come from the country beginning with C. We won't say any more on that. So that's where we are at the moment. It's looking good. So I think now, after that, I'm going to lock them down. 
and I'm going to check it again. And then I'm going to take the carbs off and put the air filter box in. I think that's the idea anyway. <laughs> so I'm just holding the screw, the adjustment screw, and then locking it down with the box spanner. And then we'll check once more. Ignition on, run to run. Shouldn't need the choke. Not bad. Not bad at all. I'm happy with that. <clears throat> right. Um, I will be back probably tomorrow now. I just want to check those. You know it is. Let me go and change cameras a minute. Yeah. You know it is when you want to get things done and you want to try it out. It's a new toy. Got to check it out. Got to get it on the bike. Got to see what it's like. Um, and that's what we've done exactly that um, yeah as I said tomorrow I should be taking the carbs off putting the airbox in with a new filter a new filter put it all back on again then we'll do a check again with the gauges hopefully they won't go out too much but we'll see how we go and I'll be back testing 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 right it is recording Right, now then, switch cameras. We are recording. Finally got this damn stupid phone to work. And action. Welcome back, guys. Um, back in the workshop. Well, let me show you what we've been doing. As you can see now, I've taken the carbs off. Um, didn't need to touch them. Everything seems to be okay. And I took them off so I could put the air box in. The air box is in. It's got a new filter in there. Everything seems to be okay. I have run it. But just so you guys can see, I'm going to put you on a pod. And then I'm going to fire it up. Just bear with me a tick. I want you to see the gauges because now you can't see the gauges from there, can you? Mm. Nope. Can't see the gauges from there either. Might be able to see it from there though. Can you see them? We got you finally in a spot where I think you can see the gauges. So as I was saying, the carbs are back on, the airbox was back on, not back on, it's on now with a new air filter. Let's see if we can rock and roll. Fuel's on, choke is off, shouldn't need the choke, it's fairly hot. Let's see how we go. A 
think you'll all agree that's pretty close to 20. Probably a millimetre out on that one and maybe half a mil down from that one. But I'm happy with that. The I've noticed the engine seems to be loosening up a little bit. We haven't been on anywhere yet, but it does seem to be loosening up with those new rings. The revs are coming up a bit higher at the same position on the idle screw. And it's dropping down nicely on the down rev. What I did do, I must add, let's just kill it. What I did do, which I forgot to mention, I turned the air mixture screw in half a turn. Um, so the default, I believe, is one and a half. So it's now on one. And I turned it then another quarter of a turn on all four carbs. That's made a hell of a difference. Because if it's revving, even though all the carbs are synced, if it's revving, it means it's running lean. I don't believe these are leaking the air intakes, the rubbers. So I tried using the screwdriver to just turn them in quarter of a turn. And that seems to have made, as I said, a world of difference. So yeah, looks as if it's pretty ready, pretty much ready for the road, I'd say. Let's turn the fuel off. We will fire it up again just to use some of that fuel. I think we might have a bit of a slappy shim, but a gap's a gap that's slightly too big is better than no gap at all. So I'm not too worried about that. We need to take it for a spin and give it a run round. We're looking at those gauges. I think you'd struggle to get much closer than the accuracy they're reading at the moment. And it's ticking over so much better since I adjusted the air mixtures on all four carb. So it should be now running richer. Yeah, not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. Pretty good for a 50 year old bugger. Yeah, quite pleased with that. So, where do we go from here? Well, all I need to do really is put the side panels on, put the seat on, the tank on, and we're ready for the road. Oh, one other thing I need to do is shorten these these um, HT leads. They are a bit long. Um, I will do that ASAP. But apart from that, he's ready to go out. So, looks as if phase two... Let me just switch cameras a minute, guys. Yeah, phase two put you over here <laughs> I don't get on with this pod very well yeah looks as if phase two is coming to an end sad really but also pleased because it's gone really well um I have said in the past and I don't want to bang on about it but I've got something else in the pipeline this is to do do with phase three phase three was the strip down of the engine that came out and that engine is sitting just down there on the floor now what i'm going to do is i'm going to get that on the bench probably when i come back after my couple of months break we've been doing quite a bit of filming quite a bit of work on the z1 the z1 is very slowly coming to an end there is a bit more i want to show you so i will be back later so for the time being if you like what you see please subscribe if you got any comments, please stick them down below. And I will be back later with more about what I intend to do with the engine that came out. And also, I will catch up on what happened with the clutch. The clutch was sticking, if you remember, in the previous clips on this video, I took out all the plates and cleaned them all up. That's all working now, so I'm really pleased. Been for a test drive on it, but I'll tell you more about this in the next video. So for me, Gary, at Gary's Practical Workshop, I'm going to be signing out. So stay safe, ride carefully, and I'll be back probably within a few days. Bye for now.